coming on uh, coming on uh, shortly um, I've just increased it again as Holly said it's no difference but we'll see um, we have a good friend of mine a very good friend of mine coming on um, Randy Morgans has been in this business uh, of doing the radio shows uh, for far longer than I have um, and he's covered a whole depth of topics uh, interviewed a whole gamut of different people with uh, a wide range of subjects uh, covered uh, our conversations are generally uh, uh, almost like a, we've said it often before uh, almost like radio shows in itself uh, we cover uh, quite a gamut of topics between us and uh, as you all know I've appeared on these podcasts a couple of times and uh, everyone enjoyed them so we thought uh, given there's a lot of uh, fun going on with the alternative media currently uh, we'll cover some of that and we'll go into some uh, more interesting topics as well so um, truth honour and integrity welcome Randy Morgans hi Randy hey good evening Thomas good evening to THI out there is our volume good am I being heard I can now okay so you can hear me now yes Yes. Okay, I had to speak up a little bit. Sorry, I'm in a different room than I normally do this kind of thing from, so I'm holding volume down because this room tends to be a bit, bit echoey, so I'll say it again. Good evening, Thomas, and good evening to the folks in THI. Right, if you can give us um, a bit of a background. I've just uh, covered some of it, and um, how long you've been in it, and what were your interests, and what started you off in all of this? <laughs> How far back do you want to go? Um, you know, I, I've actually been doing radio since I was a teenager. Um, I was a disc jockey. Um, I was doing AM radio, FM radio. I was doing um, what, what's called basically high-power AM radio here on the East Coast of the United States. In uh, the late 1990s, 2000, I went... Um, on to shortwave radio in 2003 where I launched what became known as the threshing floor which was um, at, at its time it was called cutting edge Christian radio and really what it was it was me pushing the boundaries of that particular group of people and so that was where I kind of launched into the internet in 2003 we started posting the shows online in what later became known as a podcast. And uh, I've bounced around over the years. I've been on different networks, done different things. Currently on Conscious Consumer Network out of the Netherlands, which is a TV uh, broadcasting group that my friends Mel and Biggie started about two years ago. And that's, that's broadcasters of people like us, people that cover topics uh, related to the advancement of humanity, it's a good group of people. And really what I've been doing all this time is I'm just pushing boundaries. It doesn't matter what the material is or who the audience is. My goal is to push people's boundaries to get them out of what is normally, well, I guess you call it the box, yeah. and to kind of take us into a place that we need to go because I, I think everybody senses that where we are in this present time is something quite spectacular and yet at the same time there are dark forces that are moving against us absolutely absolutely um, it's changed a lot since you uh, first came in has it not it's changed tremendously yeah 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 the, the volume of people that have joined up and uh, are suddenly pushing their own boundaries as you said and uh, open themselves up you know we've covered this before uh, the more people open themselves up the more they, um, the information stream comes to them and this has been an important role the likes of you've played and I've played and many others you know the, the, um, really the internet is a metaphor for human consciousness and like the internet human consciousness is in a state of expansion we are opening up 
And at the same time, that's a good thing, and yet it's a, it's a very dangerous situation. Um, the influx of people onto the Internet and the decline of major mainstream media, by the way, is, you know, they're hemorrhaging right now. They know that they are losing their audiences, and they know that people are switching to alternative forms of um, information. I won't call it entertainment. That's just entrainment. But uh, they know this. And so now what is occurring is that the money and the media massagers are on the Internet, too. And we're starting to see the corporatization of media. We're starting to see all the gatekeepers and handlers that were part of the CIA-operated CIA mainstream media now moving onto the Internet, and they're doing it now with um, not really hiding it anymore. The, the Internet is being penetrated by the, by the spooks. Absolutely. Um, given you, uh, you've been in this a lot longer than I have, um, I noticed a change around 2011-2012. Would that fit in with your observations? Yes, yeah, it really accelerated then, Tom. Um, you know, the Internet's a different place now than it was even back in 2000. Um, I was on the Internet before it was the Internet. I was, I was doing bulletin board services in, in the late 1980s, early 1990s when we were just using dial-up and going through exchanges that were called BBXs. And in those days, what you had was Usenet, which were groups that formed on the Internet that were much like uh, Facebook chat is today. Uh, they were ad hoc groups that got together to discuss all kinds of subjects, and they were run through Unix networks that were the backplane for what became the Internet. And so I watched it go from that into what eventually became the first few online services, um, the well out of San Francisco, and then ultimately uh, America Online or AOL. Uh, once we got to uh, stable web browsers and the Internet began to open up, there was a golden age of the Internet that ran from roughly about 1997 to about 2002. And in that period of time, a trove of information was unleashed. Um, a lot of people don't realize that this was a, a long-term project of digitizing and putting online just immense amounts of data and information, and it was done in, a, in the most incredible way because it was done by the people themselves. Um, obviously, a lot of agencies, corporations, and things like that began migrating data in the late 1990s. I was working in the tech industry. And I was uh, basically selling equipment and doing consulting to companies who were in the process of digitizing information. But the people's push of information out into the Internet, uh, largely because of um, different groups that formed and uh, what were still the remnants of old bulletin board services and what we now call wikis and uh, online uh, repositories of information, were a time when you could really data mine some of the best information unvetted. And there was, um, at that point in time, tremendous information that was coming out on a number of things. That's the beginning of the trajectory for the revelation of things like MK Ultra, and a lot of the UFO-related material came out, came out in that period as well. And it was largely, well, it was almost completely unmoderated because at that point, the government had not formulated its strategies. They had started to do so around 1998 when Bill Clinton and Al Gore put the Digital Millennium Copyright Act together and the attendant online um, laws that were formed in the late 1990s, but it wasn't, it wasn't implemented right away. So we had a golden age, and then as we stretched into the end of the 2000s and as things began to knuckle down after September 11th, 2001, we began to see slowly how things were starting to be disappeared. There was a memory hole that started to open on the web. Information that was there disappeared. It was altered. It would reappear in different forms. It would be mutated. It would be switched and changed. 
and the same the same thing began to happen to people as well. It's quite an amazing process to watch how people have been morphed, switched, changed, swapped out, and uh, as far as we can tell, probably aren't even the same beings anymore. So there's a micro history right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, you will you will know. I've said to people, it's it's rather difficult. Um, for anyone who kind of joined after the um, famous or infamous, whichever way you want to look at it, the Drake, um, Drake Bailey and David Wilcock interview. Um, uh, it kind of changed the internet after that. I'm not saying it was Drake's fault, but um, it's uh, a lot of people sort of came on board with that idea and, uh, or the ideology um, about around the plan of mass arrests and Nasara and this was going to happen and we're going to get a new government etc 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 to me uh, the cabal changed the internet after that that time period particularly uh, when we had all the uh, we're all going to ascend in December the 21st 2012 and that died down and everything and individuals within the community started changing the narrative uh, at a point where some of them now uh, they're barely recognisable from what we remember. Now, before that time, um, you like you, like I did a lot of digging into many many subjects. Uh, is it your experience, like mine? There was a lot more intel, genuine intel, docu documents put out and put forward uh, manifestos that you wouldn't gain access anywhere near now. Uh, is that your uh, understanding as well? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think what we now see is that most of the, most of the, the gold has been sopped up. Um, it's, it's become moderated, so even though you can go on to um, some of these online forums and I recently just went to look for a document that I had and apparently lost in one of my hard drive crashes and it was a manuscript of a member of an elite family that was uh, put out on above top secret back in about probably 2005 2000, maybe 2007 and I cannot find this document anymore or I find remnants of it that I don't find the document that I had at that time which makes me wish, gosh I wish I'd have done hard copy on this um, because that interview actually verified a lot of things that went into uh, it was a precursor for <clears throat> the things that David Wilcock did that Drake was talking about uh, some of the Fulford material and even some of the stuff that Shane has brought out in terms of the Illuminati families uh, and a lot of that information has now disappeared along with the people who put put them out yeah I remember um, reading a manifesto by the Vatican around about how they were going to basically uh, caliphate the whole of the Middle East and build a huge wall and remove all the people uh, inside of it um, uh, and I've tried um, everything to try and find it again but it's gone you know the some of the accounts that used to be put online the white spiritual boy accounts you know all of them yeah, yeah all I remember that just, uh, yeah. they, they were out online and, and available for people to read uh, but not for very long <laughs> so it's uh, so it's I, uh, it's sad. Uh, well, well, what's happened too is the people have disappeared from the internet, and some of them unceremoniously, and a few of them, I will say, violently as well. Um, after 2012, it was almost like they sanitized the internet, and it was before that as well. You've you've kind of joined the line at 2011. I don't think I became aware of it. I think it was about. To late 2012, maybe mid-2013, when I started to realize that um, certain key sites, certain key individuals, and, and, and certain types of information had just been completely disappeared down um, 
Well, Mr. Orwell's memory hole, so to speak, and we began to see what is going on now is a lot of information pops up, disappears, and then reappears in another form. Um, we're seeing a lot of that where Intel that was once probably pretty clean is now running through all kinds of channels and filters and it's being modulated. And I suspect this has to do with web bots and the way that information is now being highly monitored by the NSA. The uh, Utah Data Center gave them the ability to begin pulling in tremendous streams of metadata that they were previously unable to process and as a result of that I think what we're seeing is a constant um, refinement of material that's put on and off of the internet and a lot of it is put there as test triggers to see how people are responding absolutely um, yeah it's it's I just find it very very sad that uh, a lot of people, or the, the increase in volume in people uh, in the awakened, as we call it, uh, community, have uh, received um, what is now a vastly watered down narrative or diversion uh, narrative uh, or complete bullshit. You know, and I, I, I find it very sad for their people, from their point of view. And I, you know, like yourself, I've been researching a long time and can see the difference. Um, I had a lot of uh, knowledge and intel before a metric. Um, obviously, it increased with uh, certain sources and certain contacts. Some of them were good and some of them weren't. Uh, you know, but this is kind of where we're at at the moment where the alternative community itself is kind of in uh, major trouble because too many are following um, certain individuals who are not there for the benefit of humanity they're either there for self-serving or they're there as paid agents to distract and distort the information uh, being put out is that as you understand it? Oh, absolutely. Like I said earlier, we're seeing the corporatization now and to the point where you almost have to delete alternative from the media because it's just been, it's become extensions of the corporate uh, franchises that are already out there. Um, major media networks such as iHeart have now be come in and begun uh, absorbing uh, anything that's remotely successful is a media outlet. Um, people who, uh, and I will point out that I want to be careful how I say this, but we're among friends here, and it's just us guys talking, and you know, a few <laughs> thousand of our friends. Um, let's just say that the money interests have understood very well who they could entice into the game. And uh, it's funny because when you introduced me to that, you said I had been in this business for, you know, a long time. And I'm like, business? I'd still, wh where the hell's my paycheck at? <laughs> um, you know, because like you and like most of the people who do this with the right spirit, what we're doing is we're dumping our own money, our own time, our own however degrees of talent we may have into this. And, uh, and this is blood, sweat, and tears enterprise. Because the real truth people out there aren't making money at this. No. Uh, the people who are making money are the people who are being absorbed by the corporatocracies who are running this in the back end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a part of me that wants to name names, and there's a part of me that wants to be above that simply because we'll give a, our listeners enough credit that they know the names and can fill in the blanks as they go along. Um... I've watched as certain franchises have absorbed media entities and their personalities, and I have to call them that because that's what they are, their personalities, into their orbit, and then those people have been um, turned into neutered vassals of a certain modulated form of alternative media. It has the form of alternative media. It has the tone of alternative media, but it doesn't have the substance because it it pulls back at the point where it can tell you the truth that they don't want you to hear. 
Right. Yeah. Can I chime in here for a minute? Do it, man. Hello. All right. Yes. So something that you said a bit ago that I want to kind of point out to make clear, you mentioned WebBot. Yep. Now, the WebBot worked as I understood it. Um, remember the graphs that came out at 9-11, and they showed uh, everyone emotionally reacting three days before 9-11. Mm -hmm. yep. So in essence, the WebBot is... Um, <laughs> is a, a, a loose or an, excite, an emotional excitement meter, right? So we've got what they're doing is they are taking cues from uh, their experiments of, of what they put out and um, how something does, even if it's a truth or if it gets lots of excitement with whatever technology that they're web botting the internet with. Um, then they rehash it and rehash it because it, it's a it's a product that's selling even though it's it's an idea. So with the with respect to it being a commodity and the the neutering of people and bring bring them into the commodity business end of it, it's um, it, that's what we're getting right now from like 2000 to 2007. We could still find lots of things on the internet, um, and then it started getting. Um, put in the spin cycle and like you said modified uh, and then they'd run it around on the spin see what the emotional reactions were um, and fold in other people to make it a different color <laughs> uh, but it would still sell right so it's it's these people with the degrees on the wall behind them were the bestseller books that are uh, are the yeah, ones yeah. that are well, that, that's the problem. Um, well, I'm going to name names because uh, I'm tired. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> you know, it, we've gone around the houses. Um, it, the, the, the main issue is David Wilcock, who said it, I've said it on this show before. Um, I was a passionate follower of David Wilcock, and that, in fact, that's how I met Drake. Uh, because I listened to all David Wilcox stuff and a lot of it resonated, some of it didn't but a lot of it did but David, in my opinion changed from that conference Awaken Aware at Irvine in September 2011 to the version he is now where he's, in my opinion he's controlling far too much of the alternative media um, you know, and it's uh, I find the role he's now playing very, very sad. He's it's him that's dictating the Corey uh, information stream. It's him that's dictating to Drake whether I stay stay this uh, cosmic voice radio show host, and it's him that him that's dictating to Benjamin Fulford and and also Neil Keenan. Um, um, his role has changed dramatically. And, and it not for the good I have to say that um, I wish it wasn't the case like we've said previously um, I would love all of Corey Good's stuff to be 100% correct but unfortunately um, it's not and it's been uh, directed and promoted as such to, to sell books and also uh, to keep the contract going at Guy and TV would you agree with that? Yeah, actually, it's interesting. I was sharing information today with Shane, and I said, I was aware in 2013 that David Wilcock was going to launch one to Guyam TV because of an inside source I had in Colorado who had told me flat out, and this was somebody who was directly inside of Guyam TV and was not happy about this. Um, the timeline between that and the launching of this show with Corey was simply the matter of David finding enough material to be able to meet a contract that he was under to provide uh, the initial 40 episodes of his, of his program. So David was basically out there looking for material in various places to put this program together because as you know, David is... On one level, he's he, he's a busy guy, and on the other, he's not prolific in terms of being able to get things out. And he spent nearly, what now, five years trying to make a, a film out in Hollywood that's still floundering in the water, which is an endless source of frustration to him. 
And um, the point of that being that this was not happenstance that um, once Corey emerged off of Project Avalon's forum with those initial interviews, um, David was in the loop and he was very busy working in the background and there were, there were inducements to do this. Um, I was told that um, Michael Sala vetted Corey's story, which I'm also told Corey contoured to comport to David Wilcox um, uh, law one. one raw yeah. material that that with David it's all about the raw the raw raw and <laughs> so so you know whatever position he plays in this arena it's considerable in terms of the fact that he's been he's basically been built and this is a guy that had a book written not by him but about him and about his life as a reincarnation of Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet. Now, when you look at that, and that, I don't know what the date of publication on that book is, but that goes back, hmm, that's got to go back at least eight years. You have to ask yourself, who grabbed onto that idea, and why did that become such a high-selling book? It was a book about David Wilcock. So it looks to me like there's been profile building. It looks to me like, this is a career that's being built. And I don't think David is the ultimate pilot of any of this. And I, I can tell you that David has somebody, we'll just say, who is his next up on the ladder. I won't use the H word here. Um, that I'm aware of, who is basically the string puller for all of this. So there's a hierarchical structure that's running that particular wing of the media empire that's now uh, basically launched itself out of Guy and TV. It was 2004, is, that book. That book came out in TV. Okay, so that book's 11 years old. And so David's profile in that 11 years, I mean, this was a guy who was living somewhere down south. Where was he? Was he in, um, was he in Asheville, North Carolina? Somewhere down there. Uh, he was basically toiling away working on a book at the time. And he had amazing opportunities come his way. And, you know, honestly, I don't begrudge him the success. I don't begrudge him that he has this creative output. But the arrogance that he exhibits now in his speech and in his writing uh, is, let's just say, ego with very little limitation at this point. Not exactly what you would expect from somebody who's being marketed as a spiritual teacher. Yeah, and that, that's the saddest thing from my point of view, is the uh, change. Uh, it's the subtle change, um, and I, I, I wish more people would pick up on the changes being set. You know, um, David went on... Um, with Corey on the um, Open Your Mind radio in June last year, late June I think it was, and stated on there that he didn't believe in reincarnation. Uh, <coughs> I had to play it back again because I thought, well, he's been pushing his head to Casey for the last few years, and then he does another radio show a month later, and he's talking about reincarnation again, like it's always existed, uh, and so... It's that change in narrative, and uh, more people need to pick that up. We covered recently about Corey Good. He started off with this six-dimensional blue avians that are coming down to save us, um, which, as we've mentioned many times on Cosmic Voice and this show, they're not coming down to save us. We have to do it ourselves, and I'd like to mm -hmm. uh, cover some of that after this bit. You know, and it, then suddenly, uh, they're, now they're not saviors, but they're here uh, to help us, and then they're, they're only helping us with this point, this much, and then his latest uh, stream of information is uh, actually the service to self, and they're here piggybacking on our transition. So there's mm. four, four changes in the space of 12 months, and, and, and it is, although the numbers have dropped off, People have to start calling this out and seeing the information for what it is. Is it consistent? 
if it's changing week by week or week by week or month by month, you then have to ask questions why it's changing. I would well, rather, because you know, I, personally, I would rather it's not left to the likes of me or the likes of Randy to put uh, to tell people. Well, they're they're changing the information. It's always better if it, if you look at it yourself. Well, there is a hierarchy behind who's giving this information for them to say. Either that or they're going to sleep and having their memories wiped. The co-author of that book is Win Free, and he's yes. a, a writer on Illuminati News. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Win Free's experiences with the Council of the Elohim. Anyone who's talking about the Elohim is, is talking to <laughs> an AI black box or, you know, the hierarchy, you know, the hierarchy behind this. These guys are all just puppets. They're the front people. DW, Winfrey, Corey, Corey's more like a wannabe, but, you know, it, this is the same thing with the factions. There's, there's very few that are actually in control, uh, but those few in control are the ones that is feeding, no, you should say this now, and you should say this now. It's different from that, but forget that. I'm your boss. Say this now. You know, that's what's going on. Well, what do we Go ahead, Thomas. From our perspective, Randy, your opinion on this now. From our perspective, um, uh, I think, uh, well, I'll allow you to say what you want to say, but from our perspective, both of us, we're, uh, we're kind of saddened that there is so few of us anyway that we are, are saddled with, with people who are pulling people away from what we really want uh, you know in the pursuit of their own goals or for other <coughs> agendas uh, and you know I've worked hard with Cosmic Voice to try and uh, combine the community and so it makes it difficult for me when I'm uh, criticising others within it but the evidence is uh, vastly overwhelming uh, most of which has not come out as yet, but are you saddened as well? Yes, well, saddened, uh, sometimes sickened yeah. by what I'm seeing. Yeah, because <laughs> Mainly because my frustration is that um, we are just seeing a balkanization of, of the entire alternative media communities and splitting and personality wars and a lot of these are provoked by outs outside instigators who have every reason to want to split these communities at the point where they reach critical mass mm -hmm. it's about reductionism we get uh, emotional or about I do <laughs> Uh, because uh, it's taking away from personal empowerment we worked very hard to clear our our org fields, our spheres of influence. Uh, these people come in, they purport to be teachers, and they do nothing but try to draw you into their sphere of influence, thus feeding off of your power. You want to leave people in, you know, to discover their own truths. And this is what's frustrating about this, this confusion, this spin wash going on of them regurgitating the same posts that they did in 2004, 2007, saying it all over again with a slightly different slant and people not noticing it and people kind of talking about is this real questioning it well it's 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 preventing a lot of people from finding their own center of balance people aren't noticing it and people aren't taking note of it and and this has been one of my key points that I've been talking about for probably a year now People are becoming information junkies, but they never take the time to process, and they certainly are not processing it with the proper filters. Um, there are people who literally spend eight, nine hours a day on YouTube watching endless streams of information. And that information, even down to the point that it is being transmitted digitally it, through computers, has by nature a hypnotic effect to it. The profusion of information, because the information 
that's coming through the internet is unfiltered. Uh, there's nobody that's put a pressure filter on this pipe. You can open it up, you can stick your mouth on a fire hydrant, and you can blow your lips off if you want to, sucking on it. And that's what a lot of people are doing. So people have intake, they're intaking a lot of information. They're not evaluating the information. And what is creating is, it's, it's a state even beyond cognitive dissonance. It's cognitive overload where the information floats and rebonds almost ionically in, in their brain to the point where the reason why you can get away with telling a story this week on one radio show and go tell the opposite story the next week is because nobody remembers or they don't remember that they forgot to remember that they forgot in the first place. And I said that deliberately that way because that sentence itself is a loop. And we're creating information loops by the profusion of information. Now, that's not the fault of the Internet. That's not the fault of the people who are providing it. That is the responsibility of people who consume information. You have to take breaks from this. Quite yeah. frankly, the quality of information, and there were shows, and you know, my sadness is watching the quality of what's out there now disappear. There was a time when there were a few people out there that I listened to who when I was done listening to them, I turned it off and I either sat there and thought about it, I took a long walk, or I did something to digest the information. I wanted it. It's like, it's like swirling a fine wine on your tongue. You want that information to sit there for a while because you need to absorb it. That's not what people are doing now. Yeah, and that's, that space is what you need, definitely, to filter it. Another part of it, I'd like to ask you guys, how much of this is, do you think, because the energies go up and down, and, and they are, to some degrees, I'm feeling more empathic or psychic or sensitive myself lately. Do you think that somehow there's sort of the need to know and the confusion of looking outward instead of inward is kind of creating a, the the act of putting your mouth to that fire hose of information and blowing your lips off? Like, is there a, do they, do you think that they're sensing that people uh, want to understand what they're feeling subconsciously, so they're almost not giving themselves a break and just going for it? Like, do you, think, you guys know what I'm? I think personally, people, um, well, uh, let's cover, because most of this uh, are people from, formerly of cosmic voice but um, people have seen the progression of the information and it has ramped up where it's almost become saturation now um, and actually um, what I'm finding is you're getting more um, information from the mainstream media to post than we are of the alternative media because most of the alternative media now as covered earlier is rehashing old stories and, and just uh, putting them out as something new. Uh, yeah, and that's based on our loose energy. There are reads of that. What I'm asking about is what is the n why are people oversaturating themselves like Randy is saying? Why is there a tendency for the majority to do that? Because, because people know something's coming. Mm -hmm. They know we're at a, a critical point. Uh, we're at a crossroads in many ways uh, for not only in this country but globally and, and people um, maybe think that they have to um, do a lot of catching up but, mm. uh, you know but that it's not about the quantity mm -hmm. it's about the quality you know uh, uh, the days where you could uh, you know, late 90s or certainly the early part of the, uh, up to 2010, where you could absorb quite a lot and take it in, and you could you could go away. You don't have that opportunity anymore now because there's new stuff coming out. Where you used to wait maybe uh, 20 days, three weeks, roughly, for a major item to come out. It might have been an ET article. It might have been a major article done by one of the more known people. Now you're getting volumes per day, um, and people feel they have to take it all in because they know something's coming and they're going to need to uh, quickly get up to speed. They don't. What they have to do is, is learn to uh, quantity rather than quality. Randy? 
Yeah, I, I think, you know, again, we're all on some level still trying to come up to speed. We're all at different levels. This is where I think groups like um, THI, the group that you started, Cosmic Voice, Voice back in the day, we can begin to mentor people in information. And, and quite honestly, one of the hardest things about any of these groups, especially on Facebook, is a lot of people want to post a lot of material, you know. And a lot of the material they post they want to comment on, which creates a commentary line that confuses the information line. We have people at all different levels of knowledge and understanding right now. And, and some people, and I've watched this, I watched this with my son Derek, and he's, oh, he'll hear this show. I've seen how he's consumed things, but he's been wise about it. He formulates things. He, he kind of mulls over it. We talk. We discard ideas. We pick ideas up. We embrace them. There's a conversation around them. There's a lifestyle around them. And I think it's important that people not get too hooked on the idea that more information is, is more knowledge. It's not. And it's certainly not more wisdom. Wisdom is something that you grow into, but it can be imparted. And that's the important part of all of this, is creating, and I would hope that through, you know, the People's Club, the foundation, one of the things that will happen is there will be this outreach to mentor people and to create um, a platform that will enable people to be mentored properly so that they're not out there grasping at straws and, and gobbling up the garbage that's on the Internet. But the important thing is we can't oversaturate ourselves. One of the means, and, and we'll get into this as we go into the conversation, I hope, is that most of what you need to know is inherent in your nature. You, I've closed my show for years, and, and people think this is just a tagline. It's not, because if it's the only thing anybody ever hears on any of my shows, I want them to know this. The truth is out there. It's inside you. I want people to know that there is a truth that comes in, and it's part of you. It's not an external knowledge. It is simply the triggering of an internal knowing. And we have to become comfortable in our own skin, in our own consciousness, in our own knowing with the things that we resonate with. Because once we purpose to go and learn about something, we pull that knowledge into ourselves. We are basically capable of intuitively and energetically bringing in right knowledge. Yeah, but that requires the, the clarifying, the centering within your, mm -hmm. and clearing your own field so that exactly. when you hear something that sounds great, you can actually pick up the little bit of static that's subtle because they, like you were saying with the web bot and, the, and Thomas was saying about the evolution of what information is out there, it's been rehashed and slightly modulated and they brought in new people and different voices saying the same thing. We need to um, clarify our own aura so that when we listen and read some of this stuff, we can filter it ourselves. And even when we're commenting about it, it, it's not even from, I mean, one part of it is going to resonate. And we won't see all parts of it. And the whole point of, like, doing a post is sort of to discuss all the different aspects that each person is going to see in that post, right? And it's about the open discussion of it. Whereas uh, some people post things and put themselves out there as teachers, but actually do not uh, do not intend to discuss about it. It's their way or the highway, and that's one of the main indicators for me of of people that are in it for ego or are thinking that they're better than anyone else. And that is the basis of everything that got us into this trouble in my feelings. So we, any ideas uh, to anyone, is any better than anyone else? And if they're not into discussing or even hearing out someone else's differing opinion on their information, um, that's an issue for me. That's a big red flag. That yeah, brings us into the current week's happenings. Yeah. Um, so I guess we go there.
you know, I know, I, you know, anything I say is not a reflection upon the host of this show, his network, or the uh, owners and stockholders of this fine establishment. These are my opinions. No, um, you're all free to uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought I'd put that disclaimer nice, just, on there because. Yeah. You know, we don't. We want to keep the attorneys happy at Corporate Central. But, <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to the whole um, thing with Alfred Lambermont Weber on Monday, which was, to say the least, quite a, well a spectacular blow up that I certainly didn't <laughs> anticipate. Um, my friend Niels Coons and I had talked Sunday night, and he by just pure circumstance mentioned he was going to be doing a um, a group talk with Alfred on Monday morning. And he, he commented to me, yes, Alfred just put this video out about um, how the hybrids are helping with our ascension. And it was a conversation just like we're having. And, and he said that, and I went, what? What? And he said, yeah, there's this interview he put up. It's about um, how the hybrids are here to help us with our ascension, and I'm going, no. We don't need any help. We were so, just perfect just before this. <laughs> so I, I downloaded this. I downloaded the video. I downloaded it as an MP3 because I don't think there's a whole lot of necessity for visuals with most of Alfred's shows. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> as there is not probably for even <laughs> some of mine, but, you know, that's another story. The bottom line is I listened to this twice, and when I was done listening to it the second time, I went, you know, I just need to get this out of my crawl right now. So I posted onto my Facebook page, my wall, you know, the link for the video, which is basically, hey, go watch it. And then basically, this is probably one of the worst memes I've seen in the, I'm paraphrasing my own post here, one of the worst ideas I've seen in alternative media in quite some time. Uh, the idea that we need, again, some external force, something outside of ourselves, something greater than the human to help us with ascension, much less um, the concept of these hybrids, which is a whole separate topic unto itself. Uh, well, Nils, being the uh, mischievous monkey that he is, posted at uh, Alfred's wall, and uh, Alfred proceeded to have a, quite the meltdown. He was posting simultaneously. He must have been typing with feet to do this because he was posting to the uh, comments section of the post and to me in private messaging as well, basically telling me that I need to read the FN book and apologize for what I had just said. And I was like, Alfred, it was an alternative opinion. It wasn't an insult. I even prefaced the post by saying, I'm not going after you. I just really disagree with this. So there was a meltdown, and then there was a wave of people who came into this conversation who responded to it in different ways. And I have to say that most people understood where we were going with this. My goal was not to knock down Alfred Lambermont Weber any more than it has been when I've made criticisms. And I've been criticizing David Wilcox since about 2012. So I've gone after David a few times. I've criticized Neil Keenan, as you well know, very publicly. It's not personal. It's about the information that they're putting out. Yeah, exactly. And, and so there's an intolerance in this whole media realm for anybody that disagrees with any aspect of what somebody's putting out. In all fairness, <clears throat> Alfred back in the day did a pretty good job. He put out some good stuff. Oh, yeah, he's the a extra politics. It was a great book. His first book I read. Yeah. yeah. And, and the concept of exopolitics politics and what that meant but <clears throat> here again, the unfortunate side effect of all of this is there's a franchise involved. There's, well, you know, quite frankly, if you're going to do conferences and webinars and all these other things, you have a lucrative business interest at, at hand, and you have to defend that. It's so there's no, no real room for dissent anymore. And somebody like me who's viewed as an outsider and a usurper, which is basically the way I'm viewed by most of these people, there is no room for me to come in and say, hey, wait a minute. No, Let's talk, talk about can, this. They cannot make money on us self-empowering. 
they can make money in the energy attention war by playing savior slash guru and drawing us into their circles of power instead of getting and teaching us things like the centering, grounding, shielding to build up our own center of power. Instead, they can, they can make a commodity of come over and do this practice and, and come over to my circle of power. That's what they can monetize. They can't monetize us empowering ourselves and becoming accountable to our own actions and loving ourselves. They can't monetize that. No, just like IMTV can't monetize it when they need to market David Wilcock with his Savior program. No. Or, you know, the concept of whatever it is that Neil's doing to try and, and roll this, this, this... I don't even understand anymore what Neil is doing, and he's been rather quiet lately, but there is this sense out there. Thankfully. Let's get to the bottom of this. I'm sorry, go ahead, Thomas. Thankfully. <laughs> yeah, I know. It is, it, is a welcome, it is a welcome respite from his, uh, his roilings. Um, whether we're talking about Corey Good, the Blue Avians, um, David Wilcox's various permutations, where we're talking about the hybrids, which is, I, I, this is an emerging meme right now because this book has just come on the market called Meet the Hybrids. And I've looked into who's producing this and who's backing it, and um, it's, it's an emerging meme. So the hybrids are now emerging as well, and we're supposed to embrace um, these beings who are the product of all of these abductions that have gone on for God knows how long, but documentedly since the 1960s forward, um, and the experiments that have gone on to create um, genetic hybrid beings, human alien, and to now begin to slipstream them into the culture. And the concept is that um, the hybrids are better than us because the aliens have tuned them and modulated them, and they're here to help us because we're barbarians, <laughs> that word comes up again, because we're murderous, because we continue to pillage, rape, loot, and, and you know, deal in filthy lucre all over the planet. It's our fault. It's, it's our state as humans. We've never improved. And the background to this is something a lot deeper, a lot darker, and much bigger, because the whole alien thing is wrapped up in certain deceptions as well. Um, having worked in this genre for more years than I even care to admit, I've been, um, I've been around this most of my life, and quite frankly, I've been a researcher of it since I was uh, a teenager, for obvious reasons. I, I was curious to know about some things that went on in my own life. And so I've researched this diligently. I've seen it from all sides. I think Shane and I talked about this when he was on my show a few weeks ago. Yes, the potential is that there are good and there are bad out there in, you know, the galactics. At the same time, what's really going on is whether they're malevolent or whether they're benevolent, we still view them as being greater than us. We view ourselves as less evolved. Absolutely. And we're not. That's why they control us. <laughs> Well, it's a mind control operation, and it's, it's a mind control operation beyond this life. And my whole point in my objection to what Alfred put out, he simply, he simply hit the nerve, because when I listened to the interview and what he was talking about, he used a very specific terminology. First off, a number is trotted out in this book. The book is called Meet the Hybrids. I'm boycotting it. I suggest you do, too. I'll read it for you. Since I had to buy the damn thing just to satisfy Alfred, I spent 10 bucks on it. Don't waste your time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, having said that, one of the things that jumped out to me, it came out in the interview, and it's in the book. There's a number touted out there. It says that one in seven, according to the hybrids, will not make, um, what is it? One in seven will ascend which means the rest of us, what? Um, well, Alfred said it on the show. We go into the spin cycle. Okay, yeah. so what is the spin cycle? You can go play the video. You can hear this because I played it twice to hear what was being said. 
there were some very deliberate intonations in this show that I don't think were accidents, but I think they leaked out anyway. This spin cycle refers to the fact that humanity, this entire race that inhabits this earth and has for, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not a few million years, has been in a constant state of death and rebirth. And when we come back in, we've been wiped, just like abductees are wiped if they're, they're brought back in from a craft. Just yeah. like yeah. people who go through MK Ultra type projects are wiped each time they're used for a project. So you never have the accumulative knowledge of your previous lifetimes, and we as humanity are deprived of the collective knowledge that should have been our legacy so that we could have improved this world and stopped being the frickin' barbarians that Alfred Labor Weber is accusing me of being. <laughs> Absolutely. It, and that, there you it's just an, uh, you know, uh, the latest program because the Blue Avians has fallen <laughs> apart now, so let's throw another one out and use hybrids as the, the new saviour. No, you said all along, we, uh, the ETs have helped us. There's no, there's no question of that. They've helped with certain uh, aspects that we can't deal with. And, and certain races, as I understand, are clearing up their mess, uh, and a lot of progress has been made. But ultimately, um, we have to save ourselves. We've said this uh, multiple times. It's up to each and every individual. Now, that one in seven is awfully close. That's about 84, 85%. That's exactly is, right. Is awfully close to the uh, six billion that the Kabbalah mm -hmm. are talking about wiping mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. So Man. this is where people have to start putting two and two together. Bookmark that right there. Okay, all the people out there that have covered and, and, and noted the Georgia Guidestones and all the other plans that are out there to reduce the population of the Earth, most of them emanating out of the UN, going back to the Rio Conference in 1992 with Al Gore and, and, and um, uh, <coughs> Gorbachev. I dropped my memory dropped for a minute. Um, those numbers are remarkably close. So now we have people inside of the so-called alternative media who are finding a way to advance the edicts of the New World Order to bring us mm. into a place where we're comfortable with our own genocide. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if that's not dark for you, if you don't see why... I reacted the way I did to this particular show in the way that I did. It was exactly because of that, because what they were basically doing was acclimating us to our own genocide and then even blaming it on us in the first place because we're too goddamn unevolved to understand what's going on. But we are evolved. We've just forgotten it, and they're taking advantage That's of it. That's the point. That's and the point, yes. Yeah. So in Tibetan Buddhism, getting stuck is death. And even if we're making a mistake, we're still learning. So even if, if they pull off what they say they're doing, which I highly doubt, the one in seven doesn't matter. Even if you come out of this learning a terrible dark lesson, you are evolving no matter what. And that's a good thing, you know. Good ETs, bad ETs, dark ETs that act for the light, light ETs that act for the dark, they're all a catalyst for us learning. We're all going to go on to whatever free will choice we make next from what we've experienced here, even in this confusion spin cycle. It just all goes back to can you clarify your own space so you can tell when you're hearing something that's really sweetly worded but is actually quite negative and is not in alignment with you what you feel is at your core but you can't hear that small quiet inner voice unless you do what randy was saying earlier and do what thomas does do what i do which is and dave b you know lots of other people in th and i we are the group that go out and Sit in nature and clarify ourselves. <laughs> Take a break. Then come dip back in. But don't stick your face on the hose, <laughs> on the out spigot, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, whilst it's, it's unfortunate, uh, the timing, 
you coming just after the uproar with Cosmic Voice and Neil Keenan and David Wilcock and Corey. It's, um, to me, uh, because I did, <laughs> I didn't kind of make the prediction. Yes, you uh, did. That this would be the year of the apocalypse, which is to reveal the hidden, uh, and I would say the um, hidden agendas and the hidden people and their purpose also that uh, applies to the cabal but it also applies to the alternative media and it's it has become very confusing and it has become very convoluted but once you uh, look at the information <coughs> excuse me as Randy pointed out it's sinister and if Alfred can't see that then Alfred's part of the problem, whether he, he's uh, corrupted or he isn't, he's part of the problem. He's putting out information that is um, runs very much parallel with the cabals and their agendas. We've all heard of the Agenda 21 and the 6 billion they're going to wipe out. And he's saying uh, only 1 in 7 are going to survive. Well, there you, there you go. 7 billion, uh, at least 1 billion. You know, or it, it's it's it has to be pointed out, um, and uh, I suspect, although I wish it wasn't the case, I suspect there'll be a lot more um, outings before the end of the year because it's rampant. I've said this on the Open Your Mind Radio. It's a um, it's become a cesspool of filth where agendas are being forced upon us uh, whether we like them or not and the uh, financial aspect of it um, adds to it it's not the worst aspect it's the agenda that's the uh, the worst aspect of it all but when you, you they're asking people to donate uh, their mon hard earned money to drive a disclosure program you know why do you need money to do that? Um, they were going to pay the government to disclose for us because the government needs money to disclose. You know, the, <laughs> we've, covered, we, we've covered this many, many times and I'd like to get Randy's opinion on this. But uh, disclosure, as it stands, is not happening. Uh, the ET disclosure is not happening anytime soon, in my opinion. Um, no amount of funds and foundations which was conveniently wheeled out uh, a week, two weeks after uh, we wheeled out uh, the People's Foundation which is a genuine thing it, it does have funds and once it's operational it will be a benefit um, hopefully for 300 million people disclosure will only benefit a small minority and uh, that's where it's wrong. Randy? Well, <clears throat> on one level, we've been getting disclosure for a long time. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> individually, collectively, I think the experiences and the documentation that sits out there now is disclosure. Um, <clears throat> the people who want and need money to do this are people who want to run cottage industries like uh, what <clears throat> Stephen Greer is doing, what MUFON's doing. Um, what this group called Free, which is, um, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, Mr. Hernandez's organization, backed, I guess, by the Noetic Institute, is doing as well. They're trying to compile an exhaustive database of abductees. And um, to say how horrified I am about that is beyond words, because quite frankly, as an experiencer, I would not give these people my documentation. Um, Disclosure is something that we will have as we are prepared to receive that information. Many people are not ready for the realities of ET disclosure. The big D is off the table. It's off the table cosmically. It's not going to be done by the government. The government has huge liabilities involved because of the cover-ups that they've done and the psyops that they've run as a result of running my labs and all the other projects. Coincidental with the agreements that were run by negative ETs at, at the time of the Eisenhower administration. So there's huge liabilities there. They have no 
reason at all to do disclosure on any scale other than what the FBI has done when it basically put out uh, a trove of files a few years ago. So the disclosure is now. It is what you know. It's what the people around you know, and it's what you're willing to consider about the world around you and the universe beyond you. Well, the truth, the truth is so out there. It's more. There's more disclosure in movies, and uh, it is so close. It's in pieces in different movies, but it is so much easier to swallow a convenient lie than it is the truth. I know so many people that that can't read Kathy O'Brien's transformations mm, for how dark yeah. it is, but there is so much truth in that book. I found it online in um, 2000 in uh, 2010, I think, and it just it blew my mind. It triggered so much uh, awareness in me. The transformation of America. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, and I just stared at a wall for weeks afterwards processing um, my own stuff that it brought up. Uh, it's, it's you know, I, I've heard that time and time again uh, about the truth, people's experience reading the truth. There is a definite wave of, uh, of denial and, and rejection at first because it triggers things. And it's different from... You know, the fluffy channeling, oh, it's so sweet worded, and, and then all of a sudden you're hearing strange voices. It's a different, <laughs> it's completely opposite. <laughs> it, it's hard the to... Love and, the the yeah. most dangerous people out there are the love and light crowd, and I'm sorry. You know, they seem like nice people. That's the other thing that I heard when I listened to Alfred's interview the other day. I heard, you know, Alfred came at me with, you haven't read the facts, you haven't read the book, you haven't looked at the science, there's no science behind it. Yeah. This was an emotional gush. This was this was gooey, it was soft, it was all, and it wasn't heart chakra, it was emotional heart. It was the kind of heart that makes you think there's something wrong with you because you don't feel all gushy about this. It's, 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 it's really hard to describe how sometimes you're manipulated because, uh, quite frankly, I can be very tender with people, and at the same time, I can be a real asshole with them. It, it just, you know, depends on the on the situation. But when I listen to some of these people, I feel disdain for what they're saying because it's so false and so mock. Um, you cannot cloak information in that level of emotionalism and then turn around and tell me that this is scientific knowledge because it's not. It's it's basically playing to emotional strings, and we're being we're being triggered with this. If if they can't trigger us with our emotions, they'll trigger us with our guilt for the fact that we're basically a heartless bastard for not feeling the right way about this. Yeah. Well, the co truth is. Uh Truth, in essence, is Pandora's box, isn't it? Mm. Once mm. it's opened, yeah. you can't go back. Um, but it's not a pestilence, it's a cure. A little yeah. bit of the poison is the cure. Mm -hmm. The co-author for Meet the Hybrids is a comic a novella yep. writer. Yep. That, it's a professional, um, you know, drama scriptor. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, that's, that goes back to the, the same as... Um, Corey and uh, some of his stories and, the, and the, that particular book that was referenced to his story and uh, you know the, the relying on people um, not putting two and two together um, uh, and largely they've got away with it but uh, I thought this year would be different, it is and I would say um, the same the same amount of BS is coming out but the tolerance levels of people who really want the truth and really want what's best for humanity has gone down drastically. Would you agree Randy? Yeah, in a lot of cases what's happening is there are people out there who are catalysts for this. I mean, you've been doing it, I'm doing it. Um, there are people within our circle and people that we are yet... I'm meeting people all the time now yeah. and they are catalysts for this. They're, they're tired of it. They don't want to be fed the line anymore. And they want to cut to the, to the quick of this whole thing. And that is the spirit of this year. It's not, it wasn't lost on me, for instance, 
that this recent, most recent blow up came right on the edge of this um, solstice full moon cycle, which is a very rare occasion. We had a lot of energy streaming through, and that energy can go either way. All energy can go either way. Um, the, 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 the apocalypse, the unveiling, the unraveling, as Shane calls it, is really it cuts both directions. It, it cuts the bone from the sinew. So, you know, that means somebody's going to get drop kicked and somebody else is going to be elevated, not in an ego way, but in terms of elevating truth, which is what we serve. We serve bringing this information out. And I, th I think the metaphor I used the other day is that we're all stumbling through kind of cutting away the cobwebs for everybody else that's going to come behind us. I view that as leadership. You know, and I hope there's a lot more people out there that are willing to step up and do this. Yeah, yes. we light up individually, and that lights up other people's own lights. You know, but they've each got to light <clears throat> up themselves, right? But yeah, there's there's a, a cycling going on on both both sides of the disinfo and in the truth uh, end of it. We we've got to we want to um, it, put out the message to empower yourselves, everyone. Get don't don't um, keep reaching outside of yourselves. Keep tapping in. The planetary being is is really rooting for us, right? The Mother Earth. We mm -hmm. are all connected through her. When I hear stuff like what Alfred said or like what other people have said that takes people's individual power away, I feel insulted. I yeah. feel ins I feel insulted for all of humanity. There's people in small villages that don't have internet that are closer to themselves, to their core alignments than, than most of us in the first world, quote unquote, because of all of this stuff that's flying at us. Unless we have like excellent shields with filters with like wipers constantly going on the exterior of them wiping off the bullshit, we are just inundated with it and it's absolutely necessary that we come from even if you have to tell yourself like a silly little kid I'm better than this I I don't need anything else outside of me I can figure this out just by sitting within my circle of clear energy and just staring at this plant or feeling the sun on my face you know um, and getting over the programming of thinking that something is better than us or someone is because of the the diplomas on the wall or their bestseller books or, you know, the whole scientific thing. That's all poo-poo caca. It's, it's, it's beyond book smarts. It's heart smarts. It's EQ, emotional quotient, not IQ. <laughs> yes. You know. <clears throat> For those interested in the Brexit update, um, the uh, leave are ahead at the moment by roughly 340,000 votes. Yeah, I was just looking at this one, Dredge. I was seeing the same thing. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be interesting. Uh, I have a feeling it will um, change because uh, it, a lot depends on the uh, what is really behind putting up the vote. Was really, you know... <laughs> Like I said earlier, Britain and uh, America uh, are probably the two most undemocratic countries where voting is concerned, bar none. And so it will be interesting to see how it all plays out, or um, if the Leave vote. Yeah, uh, if they were rolling them like they did in Scotland when that yeah. vote came up, yeah. Um, they're saying that the markets are in turmoil and gold's jumping in price. All of that's in response to, you know, obviously a collapse of the EU because that's what does, that's that's what will happen here. That is their end game. You said earlier, Thomas, that the EU is uh, that UK controls the EU. Of course so it what does. is what is yeah. this all about then, really? Well, it, it could have, it could be. Uh, the worst case scenario is, uh, like I said, uh, and Brexit might be Baron Rothschild exit, because the Rothschilds control the city of London and the UK uh, via the finance. So he who controls the finance controls everything else. 
Now, of course, the UK have got um, their arm inside the Vatican and also inside Germany. Um, they're almost joined at the hip. They may have uh, split uh, in factions, but in overall policy, it's still the same. Now, the US and the UK have both um, outsourced jobs beyond all redemption uh, to the East over the last 10 years. Uh, and that was for a deliberate purpose and we're now seeing that purpose then we were told uh, that the BRICS nations are going to change things um, and yet we're still seeing the same banks yes they may have changed uh, from the SWIFT to the SIPs uh, on the money transfer but if the same people are still involved how is that any different? Randy? This is not my area of expertise at all. all right. um, I'll, I'll carry on then, if that's okay. Uh, but I will say this, it leaves Germany holding the bag, which is not sustainable. Um, that's why I see this as one domino, and when Germany goes, it's going to take down in ascending order the Greece and all of the other weaker nations. Basically, you're going to collapse the EU at that point. Well... Uh, that, um, from what I what I heard, uh, going back two years, was the part of the plan. Plan, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, again, uh, people have dismissed the idea, but uh, I read the the manifesto, and it was uh, out of the Vatican, whereby they were going to move out of Rome and into Jerusalem and. Um, have a nasty accident with the Dome of the Rock and then build the Third Temple and uh, run the New World Order from there. Right, Greater uh, Israel. Uh, now, um, as it appears now, it appears the, um, the Zionists want to do the same thing, so there's like a, a mm -hmm. war within a war between the Jesuits and the Zionists, and people said, you know, they can't pull that off. Um, but it's happening. You know, they're collapsing the EU uh, by flooding them with refugees. And the more people they get out of the Middle East, the less they have they to get rid, get rid of with their caliphate. You know, I forecast um, in November or December 2014, the two key countries would be Japan because of their... Um, they're like the money launderers of the East for the West Cabal. And Turkey, because of uh, strategic, uh, the oil runs through there, uh, pipelines run through there, they have a mixture of uh, religious sectors there, you know, uh, some west, some east, and some uh, uh, Middle East. And uh, you, everyone's now seeing how uh, strategic Turkey has suddenly become. Now, the old caliphate involved southern Turkey, and now we're seeing all kinds of fighting on that Turkish southern border with uh, Syria and whatnot. Um, it, it, it's, it has to be prevented. Now, it, if the UK jumps out, nothing will change for the UK because the UK uh, didn't go into the euro anyway. It retained the pound. So that tells you that the UK remained separate that tells me that they were the ones that really controlled it along with the Vatican and also partly Germany and um, uh, the leave I'm, I'm not too sure which way it will happen but uh, I don't think the people of the UK will experience that much difference to be quite honest right where are we uh, we, we even forgot the music place we were chatting uh, too much Anything else you'd like to cover before we uh, go into some questions? Well, for me, no. Actually, uh, I feel like I've pretty thoroughly vetted myself at this point. <laughs> no. Uh, well, we always. Uh, it's it's just sad that uh, the, that the uh, show tonight um, largely involved negative uh, things, but in essence, that negative can be a positive. If we uh, get people to realise uh, that they're being led in a wrong path. 
Well, let me just end it with this from my, my side of it, because you and I talked about this in the chat about a week ago. What's happening right now is realignments of people. Yep. And, well, it's sad to watch people who drop off for various reasons. Well, there are new co reconfigurations going on constantly. We are a very fluid organism mm -hmm. hu as humans, and we need to recognize and embrace that and also remain open for reunification and reconciliation with people. We all make mistakes. We're all assholes sometimes. And... Um, where people are willing to sit down and reason with each other, there can be that dialogue. And I don't ever want anybody to think that I've, I've burned the bridge behind them. No, no, me either. You know, it's, uh, unfortunately, you know, like I said, I had my own personal thing with Cosmic Voice. It was very distasteful what they did. Um, I think uh, most people are in agreement with that. Um, there's still a few in Cosmic Voice who are still um, playing fun and games, which is sad. But uh, part of uh, their problem, I feel, is I think they realise they've made a big mistake. And uh, the part of the problem is people won't hold their hands up. We've all made mistakes. You know, well, I, lack of accountability. I feel kind of guilty um, uh, promoting Neil Keenan for so long. Uh, Randy, you, you will know that we had doubts about him a, a long time back, but it has to be the right time. And, and Neil putting his video out uh, promoting Asian factions was absolutely the right time. So people, whilst it really wasn't about Neil, it was more about the information. Neil made it about Neil and about individuals, but I was more concerned with the information. And it's the same with Alfred this week. Um, either he has to realise what he's putting out um, is prevalent um, mm -hmm. or, or hold his hands up yeah. he doesn't seem to ever do that it's, this, is, this is a hard place earth is a, is a tough school to use that term the dark does show us the light the misalignment does show us where to come back to balance in alignment and there's source planetary being it's unconditional. There's no judgment in these mistakes. None. All of us will evolve and graduate from this, no matter what our actions have been here. Even the total jerks that have done awful things, they will have everyone, once they get out of here and get into that source and remember everything, everyone's going to make a different choice. The eternal part of us does know much more than we do here in this small fraction of us that in this state of forgetting. It, that's so hard to understand. I've touched it conceptually when I've been sitting with myself and it helps me rise above my own stuck parts where I where my own parts where I am dying instead of living and it helps me bring a, a sprout back to life you know and Grow light, more light in the dark. Come back towards the sun. Come back towards alignment. But we can't be in a place of judgment against ourselves or other. We just need to keep communicating openly, gently, not calling each other names. Because um, that's, that's, this is what we're here to do. Otherwise, we'd be on a planet alone. <laughs> we're here together for a reason. <laughs> you know? fertilize each other or kick each other in the butt who knows but it's this is not an easy place but um, accountability doesn't happen unless you can self forgive and that's how you undo the hooks and can just learn and filter as you learn right um we're going to go into some questions you're, you're welcome to stay on Randy um Thank you very much for coming on. Um, we always uh, enjoy our chats. And, uh, and thank you for being a beacon for the truth. It's, uh, thanks for letting me uh, come on tonight. And thanks to all the folks out there listening. Thank you. Right. Um, we're going to go into um, one song. And then we'll rapid fire a few questions. Given it's now quarter to eleven. 
and uh, we'll just have the, the one song and then on we will go right where the hobby.